Hello everyone, this is Nuro from Sky Blue Gadgets. Anyway, today's video is all about no sound coming out from your phone. What do you mean by no sound coming out your phone? So um, I've got a phone shop and I have a lot of customers come in. So a customer came in recently and he went to another phone shop and he basically, there was no volume coming out from his phone. So when he put the phone to his ears, he couldn't hear anything. We call that the hearing speaker. So he came in the shop, said, look, Nuro, I went to another phone shop. My phone is damaged. I need a new phone. I go to him, okay, let me take a look at the phone. You don't necessarily need to buy a new phone. We have our own technicians. We've been doing it for a long time. Maybe let's take a look at it. So I go to, I looked at his phone and he goes, no man, all the sounds are not working. He goes, the hearing speaker's not working. The microphone's not working. The loudspeaker's not working. When I try to put a YouTube video on, it's not working. I can't hear anything. How can all the sounds go at one go? So I asked him, number one, did you drop your phone? He's like, with a, with a grin, he's like, yeah, I did drop my phone. It dropped. I was basically, I was coming at my car. I had my phone on my lap. And when I was coming out, it just went plump onto the floor. I picked it up. It was, I didn't think too much about it because the screen was fine. And then I realized when I went, when a phone call, when I went to make a phone call, basically, I can't hear nothing. And that's when I start panicking and I didn't think. And I just went to the quickest phone shop that was local to me because my maps was working. GPRS was working, internet was working, which was strange. My phone was working, everything else was working. Like I can use the screen, I could use the internet, I could text on WhatsApp, I can use the apps. So I was a bit confused. So I was like, okay, what, what happened then? He goes, I went to the phone shop and basically they took a full day and I went back the next day and they go to me, it's called a sound IC. It basically means, sound IC means on every motherboard, sorry, and, and on every and on every phone, there be a motherboard inside. The motherboard has all the chips on there. So you have the CPU, you have the GPU, you have the modems, you have your Wi-Fi, you have... So, end of the day, he's gone to the shop, he's come back, he's come back to me saying the shopkeeper said it's a sound IC, he can't help, it's a level four technician, and go and buy yourself a new phone. He goes, look, Manuel, I literally bought this phone. It's, it was an iPhone 12 Pro Max. He goes, I bought this phone for about 700 quid. Now, what are you saying, man? I don't want to, you know, do something, man. I don't. I, if I have to, I have to buy another phone, but is there anything you can do? So I said, okay, no problem. So I just wanted to make this video because a lot of people come across this. Sound IC is basically a chip that's on your motherboard that controls all of your sound, which is your hearing speaker at the top of your phone, which is your microphone, and at the bottom of the phone, we have a loudspeaker. Now, those speakers all have our external parts that clip onto the motherboard, but for all of those parts to work, there's actually an IC, we call it an internal component, on the motherboard that basically controls all the sounds, the input and the output. Now, if you drop your phone, this IC either gets damaged or it falls off the motherboard. And there's about a million of these ICs on the board. Hence why it's such a complicated, hard repair. And, you know, it's a level four slash level five technician job because they know which part of the motherboard that they've got to go into and work on because i'm not kidding with you there's millions of ic's on the board literally so what does this mean what this means is do you see those videos where you see someone with a, a microscope and they got soldering and they basically got a tv monitor and they're looking through the microscope and they're using the monitor because the components are basically millimeters they're not even centimeters the millimeters half a millimeter this is what i'm talking about this is how microscopic it is that these technicians have to work with now once 
they have identified the actual IC, then they have to desolder it. What they do, they start to desolder and then they resolder it. And they have to, sometimes, there be black chips, they have to, or cages, they have to take it off, solder that off. Um, sometimes, like a motherboard of an iPhone 12 Pro Max, iPhone are trying to make our lives as complicated and hard as possible. So before a motherboard was flat, what they've started to do is they've got a motherboard and then they've got another motherboard. And what they've done is they've sandwiched it. So to get to the components inside, you have to desolder the, the actual motherboard off the other motherboard. Then you have the chips that you could desolder and solder, which is a nightmare in its own accord. So once you desolder it, solder it, then they, you don't need to buy a phone. A. B. You don't need to transfer all your contents, pictures, information, apps, notes, everything from a phone to another phone. We Most phone shops, the jobs that we do, they last basically. It's not a one day hit or a two day hit. If the phone starts working and it works fine, then basically it will continue working until the lifetime of the phone. So that's a good, you know, a result. But be prepared to maybe pay between £60 and £100 or sometimes £100 to £120 for these repairs. I know it's a lot of money, but end of the day, you paid six, £700 for an iPhone 12 Pro Max. What if it happens to a Samsung Galaxy S22 or something like that? These are expensive phones and, you know, you get used to your phones as well. So why buy another phone? Get it to your phone shop and get it repaired. And number two, which I... Look, this customer of mine's, when he, he panicked, he usually comes to my shop, but he panicked, he was in a local area and he, he, he you know, because of timetable and stuff like that, he wanted that phone fixed ASAP. That's good. He went to the phone shop. But the best thing that he did was he came to, went to another phone shop like myself to get a second opinion. Just because one phone shop said it can't be fixed, it genuinely doesn't mean another phone shop can't be fixed. What that means is that phone shop doesn't have an in-house or an outsource someone that they know that can do the repair. Because the older the shop, the more problems we've come across. So we've been going for about almost 17 years, Sky Blue Connections. We've seen everything that they possibly can, but we haven't seen um, things that are going to happen in the future. For example, um, the 14 Pro Max has come out. And there's situations with sound IC with that. When the iPhone 15 comes out, it's just learning for us. So when that situation comes, because we have in-house and out, um, and we subcontract it and um, have other technicians, they're always learning. We're always learning. And the, because we're already in this market, so it's easier for us to learn something because the parts are usually the same. They, Apple do one thing which is good, that they don't like changing. Look at the iPhone 4, 4S, look at the 5, 5S, look at now, for example, the 12, the 12, 12 Pro, 13, and the 14. It's practically the same phone. It's just the iPhone 11 was a bit more curvy around it, but 12, 13, 14, it's just a square, you know, like a rectangle block, candy bar design. So even the components in the 12, 13, 14s are literally identical so it helps us technicians repair people to continue learning and repairing it um, anyway going back to my subject about sound IC if for whatever reason a sound IC has not worked it's because somebody has opened your phone up and tried it already and tried to do their sound IC so what I'm trying to say is basically sometimes a phone can't be repaired because they may have given that phone to another sh phone shop and that company, they've done the sound IC. And once you do a sound IC, it basically, you can't can't redo it again. So my my, my, my advice would be, who you know, find the, a most reputable shop and give it to a, a shop that has a reputation of doing it. The reason why is because there's less chance of repairing a phone 
the first time around when you open a phone up and do soldering or anything like that then the second and the third time you basically um how can i say you are giving yourself less chance of getting it repaired but when you get it the first time you have a high probability a high percentage of getting that phone repaired because everything is intact everything is clean there's no marks there's no residue there's no burn marks on there there's no because we're talking about soldering sometimes if you watch these videos when they do soldering what they accidentally do they apply too much heat when they apply too much heat there's there's basically other ICs that they accidentally burn or damage when they open it or it could be when they're opening the motherboard they're splitting the motherboard up they accidentally just do a bad job of it or the IC they don't foil it up or they don't coin it up when they apply a lot of heat because think about it what is a motherboard it's just plastic and you know bits of metal millimeter bits of metal and you know a bit of copper here and a bit of uh, you know whatever it is so you got to understand that what you know these boards are very very fragile that's the word i'm trying to find fragile now when you are testing it out or you haven't done many you're messing about with heat you don't know what the right temperature is when you're not angling the gun down properly or heating it properly because they're millimeter and you and you don't you don't prep up a job it's like a painter when a painter preps up the wall he sellotapes everywhere where so the paint doesn't go onto the other side motherboard works the same some people i've seen they can't be asked to mask it they don't want to put basically this is sellotape that we put and this sellotape is a is basically like a bronze color sellotape and this is heat proof and you're supposed to put um the sellotape which is a heat proof tape on the surrounding part of the board that you're not going to be soldering and i've seen a lot of videos and i've seen a lot of technician they just can't be asked to do the basics they think you know what this is standard and they just get the gun and they start working on it but they don't realize because the hot gun is so hot sometimes and if they move their hand one centimeter to the left right up down they've just accidentally damaged the component there that that didn't need any heat so my advice is find experienced technicians that will actually mask it that will actually have the tools they will have the telescope um the microscope they'll have the soldering equipment they'll have the hot gun they'll have all the masking equipment they'll have the monitors because these are millimeters we're talking about they don't look on the board they have the microscope to put on the right place but what they have is a big 42 inch monitor on the wall that they basically looking at the monitor and they and they basically sold it in a way by not you know they've they've located the position through the microscope and then once they've located it they're not looking through the microscope no more they're looking through the the camera that they've got which is coming onto the television feed because the television feed has now basically expanded and they start soldering the the components so sometimes you know these jobs we um send off they can take one day two days three days the reason why it takes a bit longer is because these guys are specialists these guys have um a lot of work on and they don't rush their jobs because end of the day they know what they're doing they know they're in demand and you know what is what is the rush that they, they don't need to rush because rushing is damaging and if they know once they damage something there's no going back so that's why they take their time they relax and and it's it's, it's it's a lot of straining in their eyes and it's a lot of work because they're working with they work they work they work working on a like a 1 cm part of the board and they're trying to basically do a good job of it as well but anyway if you have any questions um about sound ic 
We've done many, many sound ICs. We've done sound ICs on iPhone, you know, five, six, sevens, eight, X, 11, you know, 12s, 13s. We've done sound IC jumps on Samsung's S5, S6, S7, S8, S9, S10, S20s, S20 Ultras, S21s, S22s. So we know what we're talking about. We've done it on Nokia's. We've done it on Sony Ericsson's different different components different phones have it on different part of the locations so we have to give it to certain technicians to do certain models that's what we've we've learned over the years as well and um what's the point of having a phone if you don't there's no sound coming out it's like what's the point of having a phone if you can't put a sim card like iphone 14 series like i don't know what's that all about where iphone have put no sim in their phones but anyway i'm going to do another video about that let me know if you want me to do a video about that because that's a topic close to my heart because i think that's just ridiculous and um, please subscribe and thank you very much peace